Monarch butterflies are in steep decline and populations have plummeted 85% in the past 20 years. The migratory monarch is an endangered species. So what can you do? Glad you asked. Hi, I'm Amy and today I'm going to share with you a garden design that makes a great monarch butterfly garden. It is important to plant both host plants and nectar plants. We want to plant native species that will support the monarch in all of its life stages. This is my design for a great butterfly garden, but feel free to swap out plants that may be more suited to your ecosystem. On my website, I have two free downloads. One is on the butterfly life cycle and the other is the garden design I use. Links for both of these free downloads will be listed below. Also on the website is the article with more detailed planting instructions. The garden is eight by six, so it will fit in many backyards. The plants in this garden design are resistant to deer and rabbits. They are all perennials except the alyssum, which makes this design low maintenance. So yes, this garden is targeted to support monarch butterflies, but will attract many more. Swallowtails, American copper, red admirals, and frutillaries all love the plants we will be talking about. In addition, we will be supporting native bees. Let's start with the most important plants first, milkweeds. Milkweed is the host plant and the monarch caterpillars eat the leaves. There are actually many species of milkweed. I included common milkweed in my garden design since they are pretty widespread, but you may want to research what's native to you. The common milkweed has pretty pink flowers. They are tall plants and need to be planted 18 to 24 inches apart. Milkweed will fill in, so don't worry if it looks like there is a big gap between them when you are planting. One thing to keep in mind is that milkweed is toxic to humans and pets. Butterfly weed is a species of milkweed that is common in fields. The bright orange color looks great in gardens. Hopefully this video is giving you value thus far. Please give it a thumbs up as that helps me out. Echnatia or coneflowers are very popular with monarchs. They come in a variety of shades of red, yellow, and cream colors. They are also a medicinal herb, so they will serve a dual purpose in your garden. Aster blooms in late summer and early fall, when most other plants are dying down. This makes them valuable food for butterflies and other pollinators. Agashte, also known as Enus hysop, is a tender perennial and may need protection during the winter. Put straw around them in late fall to protect the roots. Black-eyed Susans are common in fields when they are not mowed down. They are in the daisy family and so happy. Once established, they are very drought tolerant. Alyssum is an annual. However, I love the smell and it's great for attracting both butterflies and other beneficial insects. There are lots of mint cultivars and they are all friends of butterflies. Typically as gardeners, we trim the flowers to get better leaf quality. However, you will want to let them flower in this case. There will still be plenty of high quality leaves to make tea from. Butterflies need water. They do best with a shallow dish on the ground. A stone in the middle is helpful for a resting spot. This may be a low bird bath or just a towel placed in a shallow pan. Pour water on the towel and the butterflies will drink it up. You can also simply have a puddle. Butterflies will suck water from the mud. The advantage of this type is that they also get minerals from the soil. Monarch butterflies are definitely a species worth saving. By planting a garden of plants that provide food, water, and shelter, you are helping them to continue to share beauty in the world. Check out the links for the free downloads 
and the article and happy gardening. Thanks for watching and have a sunny day.